This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Committed to advancing health and economic opportunity for all Virginians. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond, and a very special welcome to Senator Dick Saslow. Really Good to be glad, here. glad to have you here. Well, thank you. And we're telling folks we're having a conversation on a Tuesday. They'll be seeing the show this coming Sunday and then throughout the week, uh, right after the right. Senate Finance Committee, one of the committees you serve on. You were born in Washington, D.C. That's correct. Got your degree in, in uh, University of Maryland. Right. And have served in the House of Delegates for four years before moving over to the Senate in 1980. And during that time, you've been majority leader, minority leader, majority leader, minority leader. It's, it's majority kind of, leader and then minority leader you know, again. It, <laughs> it's, it's kind of gone back and forth. And, and even here one time when the Senate was 2020 for a, a, a short, mm -hmm. rather short period of time. But we won't talk about that, but I want to talk about your, your business experience and your business leadership and uh, your work during the McCulloch administration when he came out with something called the New Virginia Economy, in which he talked about what needed to, to occur. And, and what he stipulated in that report about the priorities is what you've been working on, like particularly working with uh, Amazon that's now moving in and working on workforce development. So start in anywhere about those well, business. <clears throat> the, um, I, we've got a very favorable business environment in Virginia and it's a goal of mine to make sure that it stays this way. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Maryland or Montgomery County, Maryland offered Amazon $8 billion. Well, they and, did. Yes, and they chose Virginia that didn't offer, a, that offered about a tenth of that. And the reason is our workforce. That's the first reason. The second reason is as bad as transportation is, we do have a, a rail system here and we've got a national and international airport. So we had the workforce, we had the transportation, we had the airports, we had everything they were looking for and they picked us even though we only offered 10% of what they could have gotten had they gone a few miles you know, farther north. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it is a good environment. One of the, when uh, Governor McAuliffe was in office, he emphasized the fact that we can no longer rely on the federal government, particularly with sequestration, right. Right. things like that. So we had to develop what he called the new economy, which, um, you know, gets away from the reliance on the federal government. And with the advent of Amazon and other companies coming in here, that's what we're doing. I understand that that's one of the things that we'll do is practically transform por portions of Crystal City in Northern mm -hmm. Virginia about the, that by their coming in, it's, it's really going to help Im improve the, the infrastructure that's there already. Well, it's not just a matter of, of that. Keep in mind, they're moving into buildings that have been empty for almost a decade because of the BRAC, the base realignment and closing. They will have to build, my understanding is two office buildings. To that when you take the two office buildings plus the um, 
existing buildings that they're going to have to rehab. Uh, it's office space for 25,000 people that will gradually, you know, be filling up those offices over the next uh, uh, 12 years. You know, yeah. on the workforce, uh, go back to that for just a minute and say a, say a little bit more because I know that the, the chamber, the businesses in the Commonwealth have been really seeking to have uh, credentials that would be have people ready for jobs. Right, and <clears throat> a lot of that's in the high tech industry. And interestingly enough, my wife, who's on the Community College Board Commission, she has been very big in pushing uh, that workforce development. Uh, a lot of the companies, they don't have need for economics majors, but they have needs for you know various types of technicians, not to mention tractor trailer drivers and things like that. So there's a lot that we you know are doing now in public schools and in community colleges that will supply a lot of the needs uh, that we're going to have over the next decade or, or longer. And in addition to that, of course, uh, we're going to build that innovation campus up there, which has the potential to turn Alexandria into another Silicon Valley. And uh, we're expecting a lot of big things from this. So that innovation center, is that the one connected with Virginia Tech yes. and George Mason? Yes, uh, Virginia Tech. Yeah, they're going to put a building there, but, uh, and George Mason, I think, is going into Crystal City. There's just uh, so much to be done. And uh, this area, you know, this region, Northern Virginia has a tremendous future. Now, I know something has been of concern to you and other legislators who are concerned about business, and that's the, the bond rating in the Commonwealth. And is that remaining a, a good rating? Well, we, it, it's AAA. Um, we don't see any need to enact policies that will change it. Interestingly enough, I've had some people tell me that it may be cheaper to go the AA route uh, from the standpoint that you don't have to postpone the projects off as long so you don't reach your, your ceiling. But I think the, uh, the consensus opinion is let's keep doing what we're doing and keep the AAA rating. You know, broadband was something that came up and you got a, came you got up a, a briefing report mm -hmm. and, and Senate finance. And while I'm, I'm guessing, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that in the part of Northern Virginia that you represent, you've, you've got good broadband. That's not an issue up there. But in, in other parts of the Commonwealth where there problem. could be some jobs that really spin off from Amazon, the broadband is really crucial. It's, it, it's a, I've had people tell me that when you're south of Blacksburg and west of uh, Interstate 81 that you may as well throw your cell phone out because of the problems of, you know, communication. And um, we're trying to resolve this. Uh, through grants from the Tobacco Commission as well as general fund uh, to uh, increase the areas that have this broadband. But broadband in and of itself won't solve the problems. Mm. We need to make major changes to start steering companies in that direction. Well, in the some of, some of that report that I heard this morning, you talked about how you started with a small amount of money, but then you've really added more money into it in the current budget that begins in July. Right. That will help <clears throat> help have more projects around the Commonwealth. Uh, there's quite a few going in around the Commonwealth. Yeah, and and so the 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 bond rating, the workforce, the broadband. Now go back again to community colleges because certainly the, the, the high schools are working on preparing. But uh, from from your wife's experience and your knowledge, what are the are the community colleges really helping to turn off turn out people who are ready to they, take they, jobs? They 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 are, and they will increase it dramatically in the years to come because of the push that they're, they're going to get from us. I mean, and it's not just high tech, it's a lot of things. It's welding, uh, sheet metal work, uh, commercial driver's licenses. You know, uh, Walmart has a big shortage. And this is for a job that starts at 87000 a year. And um, it, it's a big problem with the shortages that we have in uh, getting all the demands met. And... Uh, this is what we're going to gear the two-year community colleges to doing, and that's fulfilling those needs. So drop down then for a little bit to the public education. Uh, okay. 
And certainly, again, your, your knowledge from serving through most of your career on the Education, Commi education and health. health Committee and, and to bring your wife back into the picture, her involvement Well, too. she was on State Board of Education yes. from 2004 to 2012, and from 2010 to 2012, she was president of it. Right. And so what, what's happening in the, in the public school education that, that you're learning about, not just, say, in your own district, but around, around the Commonwealth? Well, you've you, you got, um, you got STEM, you know, an emphasis on that, science, technology, engineering, math. You got that, you got it there, and you got it in colleges. But the other thing is, is that we're coming up with programs where they can start taking these college credits while they're in high school. You know, the students that can do that with, in mind, you know, of them probably graduating in less than four years uh, from, from college. And you're seeing a big push in that area. Uh, there's, it's, they still haven't got all the kinks worked out, but it's moving in, in the right direction. You know, I know another concern of yours and something that you've worked on and there's still work out there to be done is, is the pay equity in the workforce. And that's, that's got to be a big challenge, but what, what, is there some movement toward improving that? Well, there will be if the Democrats are in control of the General Assembly. I mean, $7.25, nobody can live on that. If somebody's getting up every day, going to work, working 40 hours a week, 2,060 hours a year, they ought to have more than $15,000 to show for it. That's pretty simple. Now, some of the jurisdictions, uh, you mentioned Montgomery County before, uh, in Maryland, have they, have they increased their minimum wage or is it? <laughs> Maryland or is, or is has, it? but it fully kicks up to, it starts going up, um, I guess in July, but it doesn't reach 25 until the year 2020, I mean 15, until the year 2025. So it's phased in. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're going to have to do something like that. I was going to say, in contrast to Virginia, we don't have any, even the phase in. Yeah, we don't have anything yet. We're still at 725, yeah. and we need to change that. Um, income inequality is a real problem that we need to deal with and confront. Yeah. Uh, the news that came out this past weekend at Morehouse College, uh, one, one, one could hope to have more people who... Uh, of, of that kind of means as their commencement speaker did, that he said, I'm gonna take care of the debt of the 400 students, mm -hmm. student debt. But uh, the, the, the debt for those who go into two, even sometimes two year, but certainly four year college can be enormous. And, and then if you couple that with, with a very low wage. You the uh, uh, average student debt in Virginia is about thirty some thousand a year, thirty three thousand, thirty four thousand a year. It's pretty high. Nationwide, it's lower. So that's a, another challenge for twenty twenty and mm -hmm. on, on beyond. I think there was some effort made to even to start talking about that, but yet nothing right, nothing done uh, that that would help it. Not not really even expanding the programs where you say if right. someone comes out as a teacher or social worker or counselor, if they would go to an area where there's high demand, right, uh, <clears throat> an underserved area, to uh, to help some of that be <clears throat> forgiven. I mean, there's got to be some ways of addressing that. Uh, Regardless of what happens on the national level, I mean, always at election year at the national level, people talk about free this and, and free that, but there's still those who have a great deal of, of student debt to deal with. Well, you know, I don't know how you get into a forgiveness thing. I mean, you've got d deals. There's a lot out there. If you do certain graduate work or you do certain work postgraduate, they forgive it in segments as right. time goes on. Now, interestingly enough, University of Virginia two years ago started a policy that no undergraduate would graduate with more than 10,000 in debt, and which means their the tuition is income, you know, based. Uh, you see that in the Ivy League at Stanford, if the family income's under 125,000, there's no tuition. If it's under 65, there's no room and board. And at Harvard, I think it's 65 for both or 70, something like that. 
And you're seeing that spread amongst all the Ivy League schools that are all doing it. Yeah. At, at Harvard, as an example, only 9% pay the full fare. Mm. Uh, one, of, one of my schools, uh, I didn't go to medical school, one of my schools, New York University, has, has announced that their medical school is going to be tuition free. Yeah, I saw and, that. And of course, there's living in New York City is still expense. Yeah. But but tu tuition free and to try to get more medical providers, to get more doctors right. out, out that are that, that are needed. Uh, they probably locate pretty easily in Northern Virginia and major <laughs> urban areas, right. but, but not, again. It's a problem in the rural areas, yeah. it, it, it is. Yeah. Now, Senator Sasslaw, you serve on all the key committees. Uh, just had a meeting, Senate Finance, if we stick with it for just right. a moment. Uh, the first part you were hearing, I think, from Secretary Lane about the state financials. Right, financials. and right now it looks pretty good that we're going to finish with maybe a slight surplus. Income projections look pretty good right now. <clears throat> yeah, and so let's let's go to uh, commerce and labor. Mm -hmm. uh, what when you when that committee comes back to mind, even the past session and all how. How are things going in that committee from your perspective? Well, when we come back, the alignment would be pretty much the way it is now, only reversed party-wise. Um, it, it's always been basically, you know, a business-friendly committee, and that's probably not going to change. Um, you know, uh, like I, I've said before, I've addressed the min minimum wage. You know, income inequality in this country is a big problem, no question about it. Um, I met with some people today, and I told them at lunch, that uh, with the Fortune 500, uh, 40, 50, 50 years ago, the chief executive of one of those companies made 20 times the average pay of the average worker. And now it's 200 times. And it's a problem, no question about it. Now, Education and Health Committee. Right. Again, reflecting some on that committee and its its work, do you have some thoughts about mm -hmm. it? With respect to any particular item? Mm -hmm. Any anyone that comes to your mind that you think about? Well, there's a there's going to be, I think, a discussion on how much the standards of learning are helpful mm -hmm. and the administration of the tests. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to have to wait and see how that plays out. I can't make predictions. You know, sitting in, in your chair a week ago was Rodney Robinson, the mm -hmm. National Teacher of the Year. Right. And I think toward the end of the time, I said, you know, what's, what's your closing comments? And among those, he said, we need to get away as much as we can from standardized testing and go to the kind of testing that really test other Makes aspects of learning rather than just, did you get right. those old things memorized? The, the, um, I've always maintained that the test ought to be of your ability to think, not your ability to memorize. And I think they need to move towards that. Right. And they also have to develop a sensible policy on who they're going to test and why. I mean, this... Uh, you hear so much of the teach to the test, and I have no doubt that goes on, and that's not a plus. No. Uh, and just a few years ago, it finally dawned on me something that others of you already knew, and that was that we were requiring in Virginia more standardized tests uh, that, than the federal government required us to have. I that, think that we, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Courts of Justice Committee, I know that in that committee, I'll, I'll even mention a couple of issues. You had, I think, at least four bills to try to deal something with pertaining to firearms, and they, yeah. they died. Well, the all, all gun bills are going to die as long as they're in power. Yeah. Everything died on a party line vote. And, and whether, whether it was a, a bill that had to do with the, how rapid the, the firing mechanism was or other bills, they all were, right. were treated the same. Well, it's, uh, they were, I've heard 40-some bills got put in, and they all went down to defeat. Mm. 
every one of them. And the, um, uh, it, it, that's going to take a change. You know, with respect to guns, if you've got to be 21 to buy beer, you should be that old to buy a gun. Uh, who are we kidding? And you're not taking it away from law-abiding citizens. When the law-abiding citizen reaches 21, then they can buy a gun. And they ought to have to pass a universal background test. And they ought not to be able to have a rifle with a pistol grip on it, which essentially turns it into a human killing machine. And no magazines, more than 10 bullets. You can't bring down a gear with 10 bullets, you shouldn't be hunting. It's that simple. Yeah, one of the bills that gets you to comment on some that um, went on through and the governor signed it had to do with some restraints on pregnant women in the Department of Corrections. What? what oh, what, the shackling. What, yeah, what, what was the issue that that was trying to get at? Well, what it, it became, actually it became a section one yes. bill, so it didn't, uh, you know, it's just a statement of policy um, about, uh, you know, if a woman's pregnant, and she's being transported either for an examination or delivery that uh, now she shouldn't be shackled. Now, I was willing to put in an exception around the ankles, you know, loose, but around the ankles, but definitely a bar against uh, around the middle. Now, the sheriff said they do not do that. They don't shackle anybody around the middle who's pregnant ever. Uh, all they wanted was, you know, the freedom it delays because they've had them get mad and kick out windows and stuff like that. So um, it was it was about that, about you know, essentially keeping them from shackling people. They said they don't do this. So uh, it went in as a section one bill, and uh, it's more or less stated the policy which they're doing now. Right. Now another. Another bill that uh, I, th I think my information is right, it came on through the Senate, uh, maybe even unanimous, and then for some reason got into some difficulty in the other chamber. It was an income tax credit for solar energy equipment. Uh, and I, not, ha not having followed that bill or read anything about it, I, I thought everyone was uh, helping to push for solar energy. So that something happened to that bill over in the I, House. I, I bet, yeah, in the House. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we saw it in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, it, it was an effort that you got, actually did get through the Senate. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That, there, there was, uh, yeah, the, there was one. It was, it was right. mine, and it was a budget. Yes. Yeah, it got stuck in the budget, and it had to do with... Uh, you know, establishing, you know, uh, grants and things like that uh, for development of solar. Right. So that, that's something you think will probably come back again? Well, I, I, you know, it, it's where everything is moving. You know, the question is, you can't put these absolutes as they did in those bills they ultimately had to withdraw that, you know, no energy past 2030, that's not renewable because we won't have the capacity by then to do that. Well, as you uh, reflect in our last couple of minutes on uh, your time of service, I was thinking of a phrase that with experience comes opportunity and it comes responsibility also. <clears throat> and I think that uh, those of you in leadership positions who have, have, who continue to serve, that you've got both opportunity and responsibility. and. Um, so what, what do you see upcoming for 2020? You've made some passing references to it, but. Yeah, um, you're gonna see, it depends on, first of all, it depends on who's in charge. If we're in charge, you're gonna see something, some movement on minimum wage. You're gonna see some movement on uh, guns. You're gonna see some movement uh, to take some of these restrictive bills dealing with a woman's right to choose off the books. Uh, things like that. That's what you're going to see, you know, there. Then you're, there's going to be budgetary uh, decisions on uh, getting more money to the public schools, uh, which we're funding at the 2008 level, in, even though it's 2019. And you're going to have to take a look at, uh, well, also higher ed, which we're not funding. You know, the reason the tuition keeps going up is we don't give them the money. 
Senator Saslow, I thank you very much for okay, thank you being for having us here this, Dave, this week in Richmond, okay. and and look forward to continue to work with you. Okay, thank yeah. you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by The Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Health Care Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you 